webinar and we will be sending a copy of the recording to all the registrants and attendees and uh, just look for that it's coming from my email address adrian at erpvar.com and we all always publish each webinar to our youtube channel where you can find that at youtube.com forward slash erpvar so i'm going to go ahead and introduce the, the different companies and briefly summarize uh, their core competencies. So Sturdy Pro Solutions is a team of experienced professionals with over 25 years experience. Uh, they have um, unique solutions to address your business challenges. So they're dedicated to providing uh, the right solutions specifically designed for your business. So uh, you'll be able to be rest assured that they're certified developers with Sage 100, consultants, technicians. They also have CPAs on staff and software programmers. Uh, we have ScanCo, ACS Multibin, which is one software solution now. So they're a Sage OEM provider and leader in the WMS applications for Sage 100 since 1989. They have thousands of distribution and manufacturing companies using their solution. And the great thing about their solution is that it is available on iOS devices, Android, and Windows uh, handheld devices that the warehouse personnel can use out in the warehouse uh, for all the needs and picking and packing uh, uh, the shipments for Starship. And so Starship is a leading provider of shipping software. They're a Sage Gold development partner. They specialize in integrate, integrated shipping solutions. They've been in been doing this since 1989, uh, so they have a lot of experience with the Sage products, uh, and that's one of their core competencies as far as the ERP solution. Uh, they, in addition to all the relationships they have today, they also integrate with uh, the majority of EDI solutions out there, uh, and those often go hand in hand with uh, ScanCo for inventory management and uh, shipping. So. Uh, we also have APS with us, their American Payment Solutions. They have connections with many industries. Uh, they're a leading merchant ser service provider for hospitality, restaurant, software companies throughout the U.S. and Canada. And they're a full service merchant services provider. So they have lots of small, medium, and large organizations uh, benefiting from their ability to get the lowest rates for credit card processing through level three um, processing. And we'll just run through the workflow real quick. So Simon from Surdy Pro Solutions gonna talk, is going to talk about his automated inventory counts and how uh, the data from Surdy Pro Solutions shows up on the handheld devices in the ScanCo solution for their automated inventory uh, counts and all the data goes back into the ScanCo handheld uh, solutions where the picking and packing and the wave picking takes place with the multi-bin. And then Starship takes that data from ScanCo and Sage 100 and picks the best carrier based on all the rules of the shipment, based on where the customer is located, based on the price of shipping the, the item and it will return the tracking number and all the shipment related information back into Sage 100, updates accounts receivable, and at that time, if a uh, credit card is the preferred form of payment, Patty's uh, solution will calculate the best rate based on uh, all the, the detail in Sage 100 to get to that the best, uh, the best credit card processing rate because all the the more data you have about the customer, the better the rate you can you can get. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Simon to start it off. Great. Thanks so much, Adrian. So hello, good morning, and good afternoon to everybody out there. My name is Simon Quinn. I am the National Sales Manager for Certa Pro Solutions. So today I'm going to cover our Automated Inventory Cycle Count, or AICC, if you will. I'm going to show you how it automates and simplifies your inventory counts. So initially, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of the concept. I'll then jump into Sage and show you the functionality of how it works. 
And then lastly, I'll show you some of the reporting features after you go through the automated inventory cycle count. <clears throat> so by performing regular cycle counts, give yourself an opportunity to compare the quantities in SAGE to the quantities counted. So this variance is a powerful opportunity to identify where your inventory system is working well and where you may have control issue that needs to be tightened up. So if you notice that your numbers are way off, you now have an opportunity to find out why the problem is happening and to take corrective action. Now keep in mind, using regular cycle counts allows you to take corrective action more frequently. So for example, if you perform monthly cycle counts, you now have 12 opportunities to fix the problem versus one when performing an annual physical inventory count. So CertiPro's AICC is going to configure all of this for you. An important difference between cycle counting and taking physical inventory annually, by having your warehouse staff perform cycle counts of segments of your inventory regularly, you negate the need for shutting down your operations for a weekend or a period of time, or just to make sure that your numbers are correct. So of course, we all know that closing down your business for any period of time is gonna be costly and paying your employees overtime to perform physical inventory counts can add up as well. So this is what our inventory cycle count is gonna help you eliminate. Now I'm gonna move over to Sage. And you'll see that we have created our software onto the inventory management physical count. So the, pro the program is a single screen user interface. It's very simple to use, very simple to manage. So the warehouses are gonna be identified up here by using a alpha or numeric warehouse code. And you can scroll through the warehouse codes with these arrows. So each warehouse is gonna have its own schedule. You can configure what time you want to generate the cycle count per warehouse, and you can set up automatic email notifications by warehouse also. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a warehouse. And you can see that per that warehouse, all of the items associated with it have populated into these three grids. So the top grid is basically the filtering section. The middle, the middle grid will represent the filtering choices and shows you what have been assigned into the actual cycle count intervals. And the bottom is the summary based on what the setup is. So it shows you basically how many items you will be counting per day. So coming up top to the top grid, which is the filtering section, you'll see you have all valuations, all product types, and all procurement. So by selecting or deselecting any one of these, you will see that the middle grid automatically populates based on the choices that are made. You also have filtering sections or, or choices over here. So for example, if I wanna take a uh, look at a, uh, a standard unit price of items greater than $1,000, greater than 1,000, plug that in, you will now see that the middle grid represents those filtering choices. So once you filter down to the actual specific sets of items, you can now go and perform your updates. So I've already selected the items that are showing them uh, um, a greater than $1,000, and now I want to assign a inventory cycle category and define how many times I want these items to be counted. So before jumping into that, I wanna to touch on some of the abbreviations here. So here we have YCC, which up top here means yearly cycle count. So upon implementation or adding an item, each of the items are gonna have a value of minus one. Minus one means that you have not touched those items yet. So when you move them to a zero, it means that you have actually added them to be inventoried and counted. You can also have a number from one to 52 meaning that you can assign an item to be counted once a week, once a month, or whatever, or whatever interval you require. So the update process is very simple. <clears throat> if I just hit the corner here, it's gonna highlight all of these items. I can head down to the count frequency. And in this case, I'm gonna select these for 12 times a year to be counted monthly. Click on assign, and you will see that it's assigned that yearly cycle count number to all of those items. So you can also do it by individual. So if you check any of these boxes, you can change this number as needed. So jumping on to the next number here, or letter, the next abbreviation, which is RC, that stands for the remaining count. So this is another powerful tool that allows you to set up the items that are going to be discontinued. 
So we know that some items that are not, are not gonna be in your inventory perpetually. So this basically allows you to define how many more items, um, how many more times you want that item to be counted. So it's once, so if I select this item here for three more times, it's actually gonna go ahead and count that item three more times and will automatically reset the yearly cycle count to zero. Continuing over here, we have the uh, FCNT, which is force count next time, uh, FCAT, which is force count all the time, and then we have hold. So for hold, in every warehouse, there's gonna be scenarios where you're gonna pull certain items temporarily to hold, and you don't want those items to be included in the count until the item is actually released back into inventory. For the force count next time, if you actually find a discrepancy and you want it to be resolved as soon as possible, the item in question might be scheduled for a count, you know, two months from now, but you don't want to wait. So by checking this box, when you generate the cycle count, the item is gonna be included. So jumping up to the upper right-hand cor corner here, we have the scheduler. And you can see we have the option to schedule the count automatically. So as you see, we're simply using the task scheduler from Sage 100. And here you can schedule what days of the weeks that you actually want to run the cycle count. Clicking on Active Warehouse, this actually selects the active warehouse that you have associated with the software. And you can either choose to make it uh, active or inactive. Clicking on the Options screen, this is where you will set up the various email notifications. So when you generate a cycle count, this is where the notifications will be configured. So I have email addresses set up for various staff in the warehouse that when they get to work in their inbox is gonna be a list of items that needs to be counted for that day. There's some other generation options uh, here. For example, the rollover to YCC count from the large to small uh, is a very helpful option. For example, when you have A or B items uh, on rankings, once all of the A items have been counted, it's gonna pull those items from the B category to be maintained <clears throat> um, to keep the same number of items to be counted per day. Now for the exception days, here you'll actually have the uh, option to uh, set up exceptions on the calendar. Um, basically a, pop a calendar will populate and you will be able to uh, select days to be skipped. And these can be holidays, these can be vacation days. The holiday type is gonna to apply to all warehouses and the vacation type is going to be to create a single warehouse. We also have the option to create a manual count. A manual generation here if need be. But in general, it's gonna be an automatic process. So once we generate the actual, the actual count itself, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and we will jump into, um, once the count has been created, let's take a look at the spreadsheet that's actually delivered via email to the assigned warehouse team. So when they open up the actual email, they're gonna see the CSV file that tells them what needs to be counted. So here you have the item code, you have the description, you have the bin location and the last date counted. And here they would actually put, put the actual uh, count and they populate the information here. So if you're using a, if you're using ScanCo or you're using Multibin uh, with the scanner, you can actually go and quickly verify all of the counts and perform the update into Sage directly because these items would be already populated into the scanner. So I'm gonna jump into the physical count entry program. Let me bring this to large. So once we populate the warehouse here, and take a look at the lines. You'll see that the items, I already have this open, I believe. So here's the physical count entry program. I will go ahead and populate the warehouse. Um, and when you click on the line items, which it doesn't want to cooperate with me right now for whatever, it's actually going to show the items that need to be counted. And that's where you would actually input the actual number itself. Um, so once that's completed, once the, the cycle count has been run and everything's been updated, you obviously want to know how accurate is the actual inventory. So for this reason, 
we have created um, basically what's called the inventory cycle count history. So this is a place that you're gonna find uh, all the items that not only have a discrepancy, but also the items that you have counted throughout the year that have been accurate. So you can actually look into here as to, as to how many items are being counted each day, um, what was counted, uh, the counted quantity, and additional info. So it's completely customizable. And so for those users that are familiar with Explorer, you can drag and drop any of these fields and look at the uh, information to uh, analyze the data. You can also export this to Excel. Now, lastly, I just want to point out that one of the most, one of the most common questions that we get when we go through this demo is that are the items that are involved in the cycle count actually frozen? We know that within the physical count worksheet, Sage uses the language when you print the worksheet or basically print the worksheet and freeze the items. You are not actually freezing the items when you run the ICC counts. Um, you can still go ahead and um, work with the items. It does not freeze them in any way whatsoever. The key is to capture the difference based on what is on hand and what has been counted. So thank you so much for taking the time to look at our automated inventory cycle count. And with that, I'm gonna hand that over to Christy at One Software. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Simon. Uh, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. Uh, so again, my name is Christy Lamello. I'm with One Software Solution. Uh, today I'm going to be presenting um, two pieces of software. One is going to be ACS's multi-bin. I'm going to specifically highlight for you guys today uh, ACS wave batch picking. And then I'm going to then uh, move over to my handheld scanning software uh, with Scanco Warehouse 100, which is going to automate that pick list and actually make it available for your users on the warehouse to be able to actually scan those items that they're picking for their sales orders uh, from a handheld device, making it much more seamless with the picking process as well as shipping. And then once we've shipped that order, uh, we're going to show you then, I'll hand it over to Starship and how that's going to be processed from there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump in first and I'm going to show you inside of Sage how you can have this great tool with ACS called Wave Batch. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you in Wave Batch order selection. Uh, this is enabled with the purchase of ACS. Uh, and you can actually create pick lists. So it's going to allow you through this selection screen to uh, to have the ability to do a range of orders to pick them um, to actually to pick them into a batch shipment. So I'm going to do this manually today so you guys get a good feel for uh, for how to create this. But this is something that you can have automatically triggered once you've set up your criteria. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to create a wave batch. So I'll just create my next wave batch number. You can give a description to this. Uh, so this is the way that your users on the handheld are going to be able to tell exactly what pick list they want to, to select. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a description of Thursday uh, PM pick list. So once I've given it a description, I'm going to go ahead and I can fill out criteria here now giving um, exactly what I want to, to pick. So I can have a, a ship date range. So maybe I just want to go ahead and ship orders from the 12th to the 15th. I want to see all the orders that are available for that. A really handy tool here is going to be that you can have a fill rate range. So maybe you only want to populate onto this pick list orders that can be filled 50 to 100%. I could change this to be maybe 75 to 100%, uh, whatever you guys you know, want to, to compile on this list. You'll see down below, you can also filter it by additional criteria like your warehouses. Maybe you have some high priority customers that you need to get out the door. You can filter it down by customer numbers. Ship via. So maybe you want to uh, only ship your UPS or your postal service orders. You can uh, create lists based on that. You could do product lines region codes, all that uh, is, is tools that you can use to create these lists. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys a log. So if I pull up this log here, 
this is gonna show me exactly orders that don't fit the criteria and why they didn't fit that criteria. So if I had, and actually my criteria is too much, uh, so if you had any orders that maybe couldn't be filled, it's gonna show you exactly why through that, um, through that report. So if I had any um, orders that maybe I didn't have an item in stock, when I filter that, it's gonna show me that on my log. So once I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and hit select. And now it's gonna give me a list of all of my sales orders that fit the criteria that I filled out above. So I kept everything blank in my uh, fields above, except for I did my date range and then 75 to 100% fillable. So at this point I can select out of this list which orders I actually wanna go ahead and, and fulfill. So I'm gonna say, maybe I just wanna do two orders. So I'm gonna do my last two orders that I have and I'm gonna pull them over to my wave batch pick list. Now at this point, I could go ahead and split this list. So maybe I wanna have uh, one master list and then I wanna have maybe two or four, whatever number you want of different people working on one list, but they have it all broken up into their own smaller lists. You can do that as well. Now when I'm done, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit accept. Before I jump over the handheld, I wanted to show you some options as well. So this is where you would set up this list to actually auto trigger. So you can have unattended options here set up where maybe every time I have uh, 10 orders, I wanna go ahead and auto trigger this batch to, uh, to be created. Uh, you can do that all through the unattended options. Okay, so I've created my wave batch pick list inside of ACS. And now on the handheld, this is how we're going to get that information uh, let your warehouse staff know that they're they're ready to pick. So if I go to picking inside my picking options on the handheld, I'm now going to go into uh, wave batch. So on my handheld device, anytime I have this red field, I could do three different things here. So I could scan that information. So if you guys don't want to be completely paperless, you could add a barcode to your pick sheets and actually print those out so you could scan off of that. Um, a lot of our customers like to do that, at least when they first implement, uh, so that you know you're still comfortable with paper, and then gradually, you know, wean their uh, their employees off of using paper and go completely paperless. That's definitely an option. Or you can always key in that information. So I could use my handheld keyboard and just key that in, or I could do a lookup here. Now, when I do a lookup, you'll see I have a two different pick lists available. Uh, to be picked. The list I just created in ACS's Wave Batch Pick Selection in, my, in Sage is going to be displayed now for me to pick. So you'll see that description. I'm going to go ahead and select it. It's going to ask me for the warehouse that I'm picking these items in. I have it set up to default to my main warehouse, so I'm going to go ahead and stay there. And now it's asking me where I'm going to be staging these items to because it's going to have a separate pick pack uh, and then ship process. So I'm going to stage to my shipping area. And now the handheld is telling me exactly where I need to go. So it's saying go to bin A10M. I'm picking my sales order 197 and I need to scan my item 6655. I have a quantity of five. So I'm going to go ahead and scan that item and I'll pick a quantity of five. Now it's just moved me on to my next item. It is the same item, but it is a different sales order. So if you wanted to separate your order still, you can absolutely do that as you're picking. And we can turn that field off as well if you'd like, so where it's grouping these together. Um, either way, uh, you'll have a ability to change that to whichever preference you guys have. Say I scan an incorrect item. So this, the handheld's gonna know exactly what I'm, what I'm scanning. So it's gonna stop those missed picks as they're actually happening. So less running around the warehouse trying to re-pick items uh, because you're actually gonna be validating it against the sales order as you're picking. So I'm gonna go back now, I'll scan that correct item now, and I'm gonna key in my quantity of five that I'm picking for that. And now it's moving my, my next bin location. So it's saying go to B10M, and you need to scan your item 1001, so I'll scan that item. And now I'll key in my quantity of 10 that I'm picking for that item. Same item, same bin, but it is going to be a different sales order, so I'll go ahead and scan that item again and can that quantity. 
When I'm done picking, the handheld's gonna let me know. So I'm gonna go ahead and say commit. I'm gonna say, yep, I'm finalized picking. And now at this point, I'm done with my pick. So everything was sent over into Sage Good. So I picked, I staged everything in my shipping location. Now, if you didn't want to have a second validation, you could just go into ship picked and ship them at that point. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to do a second scan. And during that second scan, I'm also going to collect my box level details so that Starship can use that information. So I'm going to go into my shipping transaction. It's going to prompt me for my shipper ID. Again, I could scan here. I could key in my shipper ID or I could do a lookup. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna be John today. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my sales order. Uh, if I do a lookup here, this is gonna give me a list of all of my open sales orders that are inside of Sage currently. So we are a real-time solution. So I'll just go ahead and one of those orders I just picked, I'll select. So 197. <clears throat> Now, once I've selected that order, it's going to ask me for the box that I'm packing. So I'm going to go ahead and say box one. And now it's asking me for my items that I'm packing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll rescan that, that item that I'm 6655. It's auto populated my bin location because I did do that stage uh, to my shipping bin. So you won't have to select your bin again. I'm going to go ahead and key in my quantity of five for that particular item. Say I'm out of room in box one now, I can go ahead and say, choose next box on the handheld. So you'll see that uh, plus one on the box. So now I'm in box two. Maybe I, again, scan an incorrect item. It's gonna let me know yet again, hey, that's not the correct item. You need to scan uh, your next item that's on that sales order. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna do scan my item. It'll again now have that shipping bin where I stage my items to. I wanna point out as well, if you have item pictures set up in item maintenance, those pictures can be available on the handheld. So you can zoom in, you can see that thumbnail picture. Uh, so if you have items that look similar, or maybe you have staff with high turnover rates, whatever it may be, um, this is a good way to be able to give them visuals of what they should be picking and make sure that they you know, feel comfortable with that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna key in my quantity of 10. So at this point, I've selected everything. I have picked all of my items on that sales order. I'm gonna go ahead and press send. I'm gonna say, I wanna go ahead and send everything. And at this point, now it's gonna go ahead and create my shipping data entry record with that box level detail. So at this point, I'll go ahead and I'll send it over to Caroline and Starship, and she's going to take over from there uh, to show you guys how you'll ship it. Thanks, Christy. So on the Starship side, now that Christy has picked and packed this order, we're going to ship it. So um, in Starship, in this left-hand corner here is where you would enter in uh, the invoice that was created as a result of that handheld transaction. So I'm just going to put this in here. Um, this can be scanned in, it can be um, entered, or you can sort, search for it. And once Starship brings this up, this is going to have over here the header level information coming from the shipment. So we've translated the ship via the billing type, um, and then the, the recipient here is going to um, Racine Warehouse. So if you look down at the bottom of my screen, and if I drill into this information here, these are the boxes and item level detail that Christy just added on her handheld. So she put, um, if I drill into the item, she put five of these into one box, and then she put 10 of these into the next box. So um, we're grabbing all of that from um, the information that she's updated in page 100. A couple of things that we also do on the Starship side, if I just go into shipment level information here, you'll see that QuantumView notifies selected. Um, Starship does have its own email notification. 
So you can create your own branded emails that have it, your own look and feel for marketing purposes. Um, these emails can go out in real time. So as soon as I process the shipment, your customers will be notified that shipment's on the way. You can also do things from a marketing perspective, like send promo offers um, and try to get them back to your shopping cart for repeat business. Um, but in this case, I'm also using Quantum View Notify, which is coming from UPS. I'm using it for the exception. So this is if there's anything wrong with this shipment, it's going to notify um, my salesperson. So this is the salesperson that was on this um, associated to this order, and it's going to notify Chris then that you know you need to contact the customer because there's an exception on it. So it's just being a way of um, giving you a way of being proactive from a customer service perspective. So um, this came in as translated for UPS Second Day Air, but I can always do a rate shop from Starship. Starship does give you the ability to um, support multiple carriers in one user interface. It supports both parcel, freight, and regional carriers. Um, and it's going to go out and rate using your credentials so that you can see your contract or negotiated rates for this particular shipment across your carriers. So you can make informed decisions on which way you should ship it. So you'll see here that um, my customer service um, person put it in a second day air. Um, it's getting there on Monday going second day air. But if you see here, I have a UPS ground option that's going to get there at the same time for much less. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now this can also, um, this manual process that I just showed you can happen on the fly in the background using Starship ship via rules. So if you wanted to just automatically have Starship select the best method um, to get it there at the least expensive way, you can do that. I'm going to um, process this shipment, and Starship's going to generate the barcoded shipping labels, um, notify the carrier, and then update the Sage 100 transaction in real time. So this is an example of what we call our smart label. It's a combination packing list plus shipping label. And so this is going to give you um, the, again, the information that was defined on the handheld printing out on your shipment document. This packing list can also be printed to a thermal. So if you wanted to print your um, two labels per box and just simply put the um, packing list on the inside and throw the shipping label on the outside of the box, you can do that and save a little bit of money on the actual um, paper itself. And here's my box two of two. Those were 10 of the two drawer filing cabinets. So now I'm ready to process my next shipment. Um, what I wanted to do is just go into stage 100 really quick and show you um, the results of that shipment. So let's go into invoice data entry. And I'm just gonna bring up that last invoice that was created by Christy. Um, okay, so here's my tracking information. So this is Starship updating the package tracking table in real time. The same tracking table that actually uh, package information that Christy started, Starship's just going to edit. And then also on my totals tab here, you'll see that Starship updated this freight amount. This freight charge here can include um, customized handling um, you can use what we call our freight rules module to define the calculation. So it can be based on the list or your negotiated. And then you can add um, other um, logic. Maybe you want to add something based on your stage 100 order total. So if the order total is over 500, you don't want to write freight back. You want to give them free freight. Um, you can do that type of um, calculation so that the um, customer service or end personnel doing accounts receivable receivables um, doesn't have to go in and manually calculate it. Um, the last thing I wanted to show is just um, our dashboard here. This is going to give you a browser-based view of the shipment history. And I'm just going to refresh this so that we can see um, the shipment that we just processed. So you can quickly find your shipment history. You can view metrics. You can run reports from here. Um, and then you can also view your email notifications from here as well. So if you'll see this pending, this was the email that was generated as a result of that shipment. So the nice thing with this is it can include um, stage related fields right in the subject. You can put the PO number there, which will be a field that could be referenced by your customer. Um, the package 
item um, and um, box information all defined here. So this would be a combination of what was defined on your handheld, married with your shipment detail um, all in one area so that your customer has a lot more um, information about the shipment before it arrives. And then of course you can send them back to your, to your shopping cart for additional purchases. Okay, that's all I had on the Starship side. I'm going to pass it over to Patty to show you how you can get paid on the shipment. Thank you, Caroline. And while we're switching screens, I just want to mention that you can process credit card transactions uh, from within shipping data entry when you integrate to Starship. So you can definitely take advantage of the rate shop functionality that Starship offers and uh, go ahead and pre-authorize the transaction while you're right then and there. Um, I do want to thank you once again for joining the webinar and allowing us to present. This is actually to help you better be prepared with completely automated um, automation, I should say, mobility, security, and compliance through CertiPro, ScanCo, Starship, and then accept payments with a credit, a credit card processing solution from American Payment Solutions. Now, I'm going to jump into the presentation, but I, I wanted to touch upon the different types of rate structures that are available and which would be highly recommended no matter which processor you decide to process transactions with. Most people are happy with flat rates because they are uh, very predictable, no changes. You have a, a rate that will show on your statement every month no matter what. Um, the reason that we do not recommend flat rates is because you will miss out on any promotions or any programs that the card brands are offering due to the fact that you signed a contract with a processor that stipulates you will receive the same flat rate. So if you're receiving a flat rate of, of 2.85, uh, the programs that are in place can lower it to 1.85 or 1.65, but you won't be able to take advantage of them if you have that flat rate contract. Tiered pricing really gives the option to gives the option to anyone that would like to process with particular processors that will qualify transactions in different brackets. So they have a fully qualified, mid qualified, and non qualified type of uh, bracket. And what will happen there is the processor has full control over the different types of qualifications. And really, when you get your statement, what you'll notice is that most of the transactions will be non-qualified or mis-qualified, giving you the higher rate. Now, there is one program that we do recommend, which is Interchange Plus. This is where you receive the hard cost directly from the card brand. Um, American Payment Solutions will show you exactly where to verify that. And then the processor will negotiate an additional transaction rate plus a markup fee with you. That is the most transparent type of processing, and I'll tell you why it's so important. The card brands in the United States are offering level three processing. What exactly is level three processing? Level three processing is a program that was put in place back in 2008, where Visa and MasterCard are offering to lower your rate in half, sometimes even more than half, if you provide them with 13 or 16 required fields. Needless to say, most people do not have the time to process a credit card transaction and enter 13 to 16 fields manually. So what we've done is we've created an integration that will allow us to take the required fields from your SAGE system and deliver them to Visa and MasterCard on your behalf, guaranteeing the very lowest rates possible in the industry without you having to take any extra steps. Now, what you see on the screen right now to the far right are the level three required fields that I just mentioned. And I'll tell you, a lot of these fields are coming from the scanning solution that ScanCo is providing, the inventory management solution and the cycle count automation from CertiPro, and also from the shipping fees that Starship is pulling into the system. So we're able to take those fields, deliver them on your behalf and get you the very lowest rate. Now, what exactly would that rate look like if you go through level three? I'd like you to focus at the very bottom of the screen for the $16,769.60. Now, what I'd like to point out is the fact that this is a true analysis. The merchant that provided the statement was actually receiving tier, a tiered structure, which is the 
fully qualified, mid-qualified, et cetera. And we were able to determine that the card brands were actually charging less of the rates that the, uh, the processor was offering. And through level three, we were able to save them close to $17,000 a year. Once again, the merchant does not have to do anything other than change to a processor that offers automated level three processing. And that is exactly what American Payment Solutions does. Now, throughout the presentation, I've mentioned that we do work directly with Stage 100. So number one, you can process the transactions within shipping data entry. Uh, number two, if you are currently processing through Stage Payment Solutions, we do have a migration utility, so you will not have to worry about keying in any of your credit card information again into Stage. You will see it in the same place that you're accustomed to seeing it right now, which is in the additional tab under Customer Maintenance in Accounts Receivable. Another thing that we also offer that is fully integrated into Stage 100 is ACH processing. What you see on the screen right now is a setup of the ACH under customer maintenance, but also credit card processing, as I mentioned. Very simple, due to PCI compliance, we ask that you key in all of the information for, from the credit card, and then we tokenize it for the information in our secured vault, and this is what your users will see when they're processing a credit card transaction. We follow Sage's security settings as far as, I'm sorry, we follow Sage's security settings as well as the user count. So you won't have to reset any of the settings for a user to process transactions. You can enter uh, credit card information as you would in, in regular Sage in customer maintenance, or you can allow the user to add credit card information within a sales order on the fly in an invoice data entry as well as cash receipt entry. Now, what I did is I pre-created a sales order. You can see that the credit card information will default into the sales order as you're already accustomed to. In the totals tab, if you're integrated with Starship, you will have the freight amount. However, if you do not have Starship and you're guesstimating, you can always go back and change the freight amount when you're ready to capture the funds, even after you pre-authorize. You have the option to pre-authorize or directly capture under a sales order. If you pre-authorize, I do want to underline the fact that our pre-authorization length of time is anywhere between 7 and 30 days. Now, I'm underlining that because most processors will allow you to uh, keep the pre-authorization valid for seven days only. So keep in mind with us, it, it can be up to 30 days. You can process transactions individually or in batches, standard stage once again. I'm gonna go ahead and process a pre-authorization. And what I have to do is simply click on submit card. What you'll notice is the credit card information that you chose will default onto the APS page screen. And at this point, um, it will ask you for a validation code or the CVB code, which is a three-digit number in the back of a card if it's a Visa or MasterCard. The user will be able to change to another card, edit the card, or completely delete or add cards on the fly, as I mentioned before. If the CVB code is a required field, which is entirely optional, you can turn that requirement off, the user will be forced into typing in the CVB code and then submitting the transaction. Once the transaction is submitted, you will receive a, a uh, transaction ID that comes from the APS portal. The transaction ID is generated at the moment that we process the transaction in Sage. So the information is actually flowing into our portal live. And if you go to our portal and click on the transaction ID, you will be able to see all of the information that's coming from Sage right on the portal. So you can see we not only show you the credit card information, we also show you the bill to and ship to, order. We go down to the line level detail, and I'll tell you, all of this information is what is being transferred or provided, I should say, to Visa and MasterCard on your behalf in order to provide you with the very lowest rates in the industry. So that's why a lot of the third-party products that are presented today are so important because most of these deals come from those third-party products. And not only that, once we have those deals, we can give you the level of savings that I showed you on this analysis. And you have to do nothing different. Once again, you'll have the automation, mobility, security, and compliance. 
Now, I would like to point out the fact that we do offer very transparent merchant statements. We want you to know where the, the fees on your statement are coming from, who's making the money where, and where exactly there, are room, there is room for savings. We guarantee our rates in writing so you don't have to worry about the rates creeping up on you. We provide assistance with PCI compliance at no charge. We also provide level three processing at no charge, and it is automated underline automated because most processors will ask you to key in the fields that I showed you a few seconds ago. We do not charge for the credit card processing module, installation, implementation, or training, and we provide maintenance and support at no charge as well. We offer very simple gateway fees, which is $15 a month, no matter what the volume of your account is. We also offer 12-hour funding. So if you back out by 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will have the funds available in your bank account as early as 8 a.m. the next morning. So it's 11 to 12 hour funding. Our support team is available 24 seven, 365 days a year. And when I say available, I mean a live human being will answer the phone even if you call at three in the morning. Our online management and reporting is very expensive. We offer thousands of reports, not just out of our portal, but we've also added batch reporting from Sage. We have a very streamlined installation process. And what I'd like to mention is if anybody is interested in obtaining a free analysis, all you have to do is send me a copy of your merchant statements. I will provide you with that analysis, no strings attached, and I will help you to understand and decipher your current merchant statements. We also offer American Express Opt Blue which lowers the rates from American Express considerably. We offer the ability to process in the United States and Canada, also soon in the Caribbean and Latin America. The migration utility I mentioned literally cuts down the time that you need to process from days to hours, actually sometimes minutes. We also offer free equipment. So if you're in need of equipment, we have state-of-the-art credit card processing equipment, which we help set up maintain and support at no charge. If you're processing with Sage Payment Solutions, we will pay your cancellation fees. So what we're trying to do here is, now that that Sage Payment has been disposed of, we want to make sure that you know there is an alternative out there and American Payment Solutions will be your best alternative because you will not struggle with making the switch. Not as you make the switch or as the training happens because as you can see, we work very similar to the way that Sage does, uh, except we've added several new features. And last, I wanted to just uh, mention that I'd love to invite everybody to Sage Summit in Toronto. If anybody's interested in attending, our booth is B13. And I just wanted to give um, everyone else on the call the opportunity to invite if they're, they're going to be attending Sage Toronto. Uh, with that, I'd like to go ahead and hand it back over to you, Adrian. Thank you, Patty. I'm going to go ahead and flash up the contact information. So I'm going to make myself presenter. And here's everybody's contact information. Let me show my screen. And um, perfect. Looks like I have the right screen showing. I'm going to um, launch some polls while I announce the questions. And just a reminder to everybody, if you do have any questions, please click on that question mark button next to your name on the webinar pane, and a dialog box will open up where you can key in your question. We'd love as many questions as you have out there, so please feel free, and we'll announce them as they come in. And let me launch this poll. So are you inter interested in learning more about any of the following? So just check all that apply here. And let's get on to the questions. We have a question. Uh, this is for you, Caroline. What are the yellow exclamation points indicating in Starship next to the rates in Rate Shop? Thank you, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Thanks for your question. Um, those just mean that there's additional information about the rate. Maybe there's um, additional handling. I think that that second um, box has some additional handling in it or um, so it's just additional notices from the carrier that come back to that rating. So you can drill into each of those to learn more about what the carrier is trying to notify you on, um, but those are just a little informational. 
And it looks like we have a question for Patty. Uh, we use Sage Payment Solutions. How can you get a better rate from Sage uh, than Sage? Um, Sage Payment Solutions does not currently offer level three processing, um, or if they offer it, I've never seen a successful implementation of level three. So it's very easy for us to be able to lower your rates instantly with level three. And you said something, Patty, about Sage Payment Solutions dissolving. Did I hear you right? Oh, I was just reading off of the uh, press release where they were announcing, and, and I quote the words that were on the press release, disposal of Sage Payment Solutions. So it appears that Sage Software has sold off their North American Sage Payment Solutions. And now we, we're, everybody's very uncertain as far as where they're headed. So I wanted to present American Payment Solutions as one of the best alternatives out there. So if they sold their Sage Payment Solutions and it's a third party provider now, it's not actually Sage. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. That is correct, Adrian. And you already have that uh, fully integrated solution, so it's seamless. You, they can switch over to you and probably realize the savings almost immediately. Exactly. Not, not just the savings, but a very minimal learning curve. Um, as, the as I presented, the integration itself is very similar, but we have definitely added several key functions that were being requested by many of the Sage end users. And we have another question from Jane. Thank you, Jane, for your question. It uh, looks like uh, for APS, American Payment Solutions, is there any additional programming needed when JobOps is installed? Not that I'm aware of, but I will tell you, some of our integrated products have come about due to a merchant requesting it, and we typically do not charge to integrate with other third-party products. We have, for example, integrated e-commerce solutions uh, with Certipro, with Starship, with Scanco, and there's really no charge. So really what will justify the cost of the development on our side is the volume of an account, and we could immediately let you know uh, if we're able to work on the integration for you once we see a statement. And we have a question. Can we get a copy of this presentation so I may show the rest of my staff? Yes, we are recording this presentation. And just keep a lookout in your email box later on this afternoon or at the latest tomorrow morning. You'll receive an email follow-up with all the contact information of the presenters today, along with a copy of the recorded presentation via YouTube, a YouTube link. And all of our presentations, we have this and more uh, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ERPVAR. And you'll see all of these uh, presentations there, all the presentations we've done over the past uh, four or five years. And let's see. Uh, we have a question for you, Caroline. Um, we have our own fleets of trucks. Uh, can you add independent fleets of trucks into Starship? Hey, thanks, Adrian. Yes, um, we have a user definable module that you can license in Starship. Gives you the ability to define any an unlimited number of um, carriers and. In, with customers that have their own fleet, many times they'll define each truck as its own carrier um, so that they can keep track of the shipments that are going on out with each truck. And that will also give you the ability to create generic labels for your packages if you want to, as well as keep the workflow consistent for your shippers, you know, with all the other carriers. So definitely can do that. And it looks like we're... Um we're out of questions for now. If you just wanted to remind the audience, if you do have questions, we'd love to hear them. Just click on that question mark button next to your name and key in your question. Uh, let's see. Oh, we do have one coming in here. Uh, what is the cost of the one software solution with the multi-bin? How do I get that added? So that's a great question. It's going to vary by uh, quite a bit of different criteria. Um, the Scanco piece with the handhelds is going to be based on users. 
And then the ACS piece, uh, while there is ACS standard is included free for all Sage 100 um, clients, 100C and then 2013 and above, um, there will be um, there will be quite a bit of different uh, questions we would need to ask to get that uh, pricing for you. So uh, if we can go ahead and contact you or if you would like to reach out to us after, we can get you some uh, some pricing on that from there. And we have a question from another question from Jessica. Thank you so much, Jessica. What kind of support is available from Scanco and Certipro? And so we'll go ahead and start with you, Christy. Sorry, I, you cut out. Could you repeat that? What kind of support is available from Scanco and Certipro? So we'll go ahead and start off with you on the Scanco side. So Scanco support's going to be uh, included with your package. Um, we do guarantee a call back uh, within, uh, you know, a, a four-hour window. Um, and that's going to be unlimited support, whether it's going to be through, uh, if you want to do it through email, through phone, uh, and then we can remote connect to you as well. And then Simon, do you want to go ahead and uh, explain sure. on behalf of CertiPro? Yeah. Hi, Jessica. Yeah. So the pricing uh, for the automated inventory cycle count uh, and, uh, and the activation fee actually includes the implementation, all the training, uh, the new releases, any bug fixes, and any updates. So you're covered as far as that is concerned. Um, additional support above and beyond that, which for this specific product is very, generally pretty minimal after the implementation, um, is either done directly with us or through your partner. And when you say partner, um, your local Sage 100 support provider who probably implemented your software or has um, has inherited uh, supporting you on the Sage 100 side. That's correct. So what happens if they don't have a local partner, Simon? Um, we they can feel free to discuss that with us, and we'll uh, we'll deal with that on a case by case. Uh, basis. We are happy to discuss that option with them as well. Perfect. So, I mean, if they, for, you know, in the rare situation, if they don't have a partner, you guys are capable of supporting, um, supporting them after. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Yeah. We are, okay. a go, we are, we are a gold sage development partner uh, and we work with many companies and we are open to that discussion, of course. Perfect. But obviously it's ideal to work with your local partner. Uh, just, you know, because you know them so well and they were the ones that implemented the solution probably and know your business. So there's always advantages to working with a channel partner. So it looks like uh, we don't have any more questions. Uh, so I just wanted to thank and we have, you know, a couple minutes left. So we're on target with time. And I just wanted to thank the audience again for spending this hour with us. We know your time is hard to come by and we really appreciate you learning a little bit more about all of these solutions and hopefully uh, we'll be able to earn your business and uh, support you in the future. Uh, we do have this poll open and I see that 47% of you have voted and if you could just take a second to answer this poll, we would love to hear from you. So we're at 57%, 59%. Yay. Did the panelists have anything else left to talk about or closing comments? Oh, we do have a question from Rosie. Rosie, thank you. Does the ACS module work with a previous multi-bin solution offered by IIG? They don't work together. Uh, we'd be happy to talk about switching you over to the ACS multi-bin solution. Um, and we can walk you through how that would be handled and how we can make that as smooth as possible for you and, and have a successful implementation on ACS. I would just say reach out to us separately and we can uh, start that discussion. All right. Well, it looks like we have 61%. Oh, we have another question from Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. Are all our bins are created in IEIG, but don't want to start from scratch? Can you import that data over? Yes, we can do that. 
Perfect. So you could take that heavy lifting off their shoulders and do that on their behalf. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Okay, so well, thank you everyone once again. I so appreciate it. And we hope to see you next time on our next Sage 100 webinar, which you all receive an invitation for. Uh, since you signed up for this one, if it's distribution related or manufacturing related, we'll invite you to that webinar and we hope uh, that you're able to join. And uh, thanks so much. All right, take care, everybody. I'm going to close out this poll. And in the webinar, I'm going to share the results real quick. So it looks like we have 61% interested in your solution, Simon, 56% uh, in your solution, Christy, 56% uh, in Starship, and 28% in yours, Patty, for APS. And thanks, everybody, once again. And we'll uh, see you next time. Take care. Bye, guys.